and it brings us nicely on to um, talking to Simon, which um, our conversation is going to be about making improvements. So um, as a bit of a disclaimer, I used to work with Simon um, in the Environment Agency, so I know a little <laughs> bit more about what he's going to talk about than um, some of the other examples. Um, but I guess um, this is really a, a conversation that centers on some of the, I mean, personally, my experience has been seeing people often know a problem exists, but maybe take the wrong action around it. Um, and so I guess, Simon, if you want to tell us a little bit more about who you are, what work you've been doing and, and why it's particularly um, been an improvement for the Environment Agency. Yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, I work in uh, a team called the Data and Systems Team um, within the Environment Agency, where I'm a senior advisor. Um, and my role is to kind of help the organisation ensure data is good enough, um, a good enough quality, and we're confident in using it for the purposes that we want to use it for. So in our case, it's, you know, the environmental outcomes that we want, creating a better place. And scary, I looked at the, uh, the, the calendar the other day and realised I've been working in data management for about 16 years now. So, yeah, I've been, been doing it for quite a while. Um, yeah, and I guess so. We've been looking at um, kind of the most effective way to ensure our data is uh, fit for purpose. Um, and that's kind of thinking um, in the round about finding the right way to manage our data for the benefit of our data quality. And so we really want to be proactive um, and sort of look at preventing errors before they occur rather than, you know, the reactive one of kind of looking at the results and thinking, oh, look, we can spot some errors. We'd better do some you know data cleaning or, or or get somebody to look at it so um all those things we've been talking about uh, before like thinking about um what the purpose of the data is what that means for um uh, what parts of the data need to be right how it needs to be right what are our expectations on uh, of that data and looking at the, the dharma dimensions to define how um how we can uh, set rules to say what they um what, what is right, we've been doing that work and testing and reporting. So being able to look at the results um, and then being able to look at then identifying what the issues are. And the key next step is not to then instantly think, well, we better clean the data, it's not up to standard, is to then think about the root causes and looking at why it's happening, where it's happening, and look as far back up the data flow as possible so we can work out what the best place is to, to make those fixes. Uh, so a recent example um, with uh, environmental data, kind of priority environmental data that I've worked with, is um, it's kind of proved a real catalyst for discussions on that kind of wider data management work. It really feeds into um, all the different things we do to with data management, you know, thinking about the governance, thinking about the design of the data, thinking about the business process um, and the resource we commit to data management work and more. So I'm just looking at some of the things that we we've done. Um, I guess look, thinking about the shiny, you know, one of the first things people go for is, um, you know, we need a new system or something like that. Not always the case, but, you know, there is the, the looking at the systems and working out if the requirements have changed since you first built the system. You, you get things where people start putting um, those extra requirements into free text fields and then recording it there where we could be controlling it better you know with a different with an improved schema or design and then thinking about those um, kind of uh, rules that we've got can we start looking at the validation as the data comes in can we start looking at the the business process where people are doing uh, work um, can we put quality controls in uh, uh, in those processes and where people handle the data, you know, all those types of things we've looked at um, really delving into those parts of the, the business process to work how we can improve it from, you know, from that wider viewpoint. And, you know, it, it really does reach into um, how you handle your data, data completely and thinking about, you know, if you've got enough people doing what you want them to do, have they got the right guidance and documentation? Is, are they doing it based on, you know, what um, what we've always done, what the, the person who was doing it before them has done. So um, actually having that consistency is really key. So you've got the resilience and repeatability of your processes. 
I think that's um, really interesting, especially in an organization like the Environment Agency, where you've got a huge group of people entering mm. data, they're working in different offices, they're, they're developing their own kind of local standards often for, for putting stuff in and people yeah. are training people and those kind of bad habits can easily proliferate. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I guess all of that makes complete sense to me. I, is, is it something that you've seen actual evidence of improvements in the data over time? Yes, yeah. So we've been using those kind of uh, Dharma uh, dimensions and the, and the rules I've talked about. We've been monitoring the data quality for the last couple of years. And what's really pleasing to see is where you start to see sustained um, improvements in the quality, looking at those metrics. Um, and, it, you know, it's those kind of trends upwards rather than the kind of one step forward, two step back type trends you see where you're doing the, the data cleansing, where it pops up and we go, oh, we better look at that. We look at it for a bit and then we forget about it and then it degrades again. So, yeah, it's really pleasing to see that kind of improvement. And I think also um, not only on, you know, the kind of the metrics, which we sometimes, you know, get get quite um, focused on, but it's that effort upstream, which is being reduced. Um, those kind of mini factories of uh, un invisible effort to mangle the data when you get it and it's not in, in, the, in this, the state that you need it. It's reducing those and enabling us to automate some products more because we've taken all that manual step out. Um, it's, it's really pleasing to see. So, yeah. That's fantastic and really inspiring to hear that it's not just a theory that this is something that's actually making a difference mm. to real live data that real live people are working with. Mm. Thanks. That's 